Today's topic, six alternatives to your 401k or 403b plan. Now, spoiler alert, in most circumstances, you probably want to be using your 401k or your 403b. However, maybe there are times that you don't have it. Maybe there are times that you're looking for other options. We're even going to talk through on how a lot of these can actually probably be working together depending on your situation. And with these six other alternatives, we'll walk through what they mean, what some of the limitations are, what some of the benefits are. So we'll also kind of give you another glimpse into the other side of the investment world because most of the time we're only thinking about our 401k and 403b. So stay tuned, that's all coming up next. The first alternative, the IRA, long form name, individual retirement account. Now, while we start with the IRA, we're gonna put a link in the show notes below. The reason why the IRA is not the most attractive for our audience, which I'm gonna assume you're either a physician or another high income earning professional, where a lot of our topics probably also pertain to you as they do the physician community. And the main issue is deductibility. Now, there's a lot of unique scenarios that either give you a deduction or they don't, and we're gonna include the IRS chart, like I said, below in the notes, and you can walk through all those scenarios and you'll see them. But again, we've done this for a long time. We've seen a lot of scenarios. For the most blanket statement I can give you, most physicians will not be able to get the deduction there which is not really entirely a bad thing because that also then gives us something that we love called the backdoor Roth, but we'll get to that in a second. So again, the name here, IRA, individual retirement account, how much can you get into it? Whether this is deductible or not deductible, 2023 limit, 6,500. We just found out actually right before I jumped into recording these videos, limit will go up next year. So 2024, that will go up to 7,000. If you are over the age of 50, don't forget to take advantage of your catch-up contribution, which that increases by $1,000. So we already covered the deductibility part. And then the other appeal to IRAs, and this is one you'd probably give this maybe a leg up compared to your 401k. Most 401ks, most 403bs are going to give you your menu of options, right? So with your IRA, you're going to have more flexibility there, whether that's different mutual funds, whether that's different ETFs, whether that's added in something called a REIT. If you want some real estate exposure, we know real estate's a popular topic in the physician community, you'll have more investment options there. You can also get a little bit more unique and even go into something called a self-directed IRA. We would urge you to proceed with caution there because one mishap can lead to this being a very, very, very taxable account. But this is where if you've ever heard of someone investing into real estate, not like a REIT, but actual direct real estate or cryptocurrencies, that is something they're utilizing called a self-directed IRA, which again, proceed with caution, make sure you know what you're doing, walk through that with a very good advisor, a really good CPA accountant. But your first option is the IRA. Now, here is how I would look at this if I'm watching this video as a physician or another high income professional. While we want you to take advantage of tax deductions, because if you don't have a 401k plan, we just lost 401k or 403b, we just lost one of your easiest low hanging fruit tax deductions, right? The IRA though, the number's not that large, and like I said, you're likely not going to have the deductibility. So what I would be looking at here is utilizing this IRA as a potential backdoor Roth IRA stepping stone. So I won't get into how to do a backdoor Roth IRA. We have videos on that. We have blogs on that. If you do a Google search, you'll find so many great resources. But essentially, the goal here would be is you make a contribution into your IRA and your income's too high, so it's not deductible, and then you would take this conversion over to your Roth, and that would be your backdoor Roth. The one thing I try to emphasize in every one of these videos, every one of my blog posts is, remember, you cannot have any other IRA balances. Traditional IRA, SEP IRA, which we will cover in this video, a simple IRA, which isn't all that common, but guess what? We'll cover it in this video too. You get you can't have any balances there. You get into this pro rata issue. So make sure you're having a clean house there in terms of IRA. We'll leave it there for the first one, but your first alternative is the IRA, but I would urge you to maybe look at utilizing this in a different way in terms of the backdoor Roth, because I'm going to make a pretty high level assumption and a probably a pretty, pretty precise calculation here that you likely won't have the deductibility, which is why it kind of really removes this one as one of the better alternatives out there. Next up, probably my favorite account, the Roth IRA, or if we're doing long form again, Roth Individual Retirement Account. That is your IRA. So this is the Roth IRA. So yes, an alternative to your 401k or 403b, but I'm gonna build on the notes I just took from the IRA section. 
you likely want to use this as a stepping stone account, right? Because you have that option. And here's the other big caveat. If you are watching this as a physician or other high income professional is you likely make too much money again to go directly to the Roth. So this is why your IRA and your Roth work together and you have to utilize this thing called the backdoor Roth. So the first two, while we label them as alternatives, and when I say the first two referring to the IRA and then the Roth IRA, you likely have some form of limitation that is holding you back from taking advantage of these directly. So, you know, we can throw a rock here and get two with one is take advantage of the IRA, convert it into your Roth IRA. Now, Roth IRA, let's talk through the same requirements. I'm trying to keep a, a very common outline here. So name of it, Roth IRA, same limits as the IRA. Currently 6,500 in the year 2023. That will bump up to 7,000 in the year 2024. Over the age of 50, still get that $1,000 bonus. Same rules apply with opening up the investment universe. So that is another appeal to the Roth IRA. So while the Roth IRA is certainly an alternative, I would urge you to have your IRA and Roth IRA work together and build that into your longer term plan. And then we can really work it backwards as we walk through some of these other accounts to see, hey, what are our other options? But the next few that we're going to get into, there's one in there that's kind of like an in-between, which I believe that it's next. But then we're going to have three that really only pertain to 1099 income. So if we're sitting here and you are a W-2 physician, W-2 high income earner, and you only have W-2 income, as we sit here right now, you have kind of gone through all your other options besides when we covered the HSA, which is a health savings account. So that is why you should really urge your employer to have a 401k or a 403b plan because there's not many other places to go. There's not many other places to hide in terms of taxes. So bring it up to your employer, bring it up to your HR, but really the 401k, 403b are slam dunk for pretty much everyone because of where we're getting limited on the other side. Uh, and I always say anytime we have, especially in smaller physician practices, sometimes we'll see this, or maybe they're using like a simple IRA and not a traditional 401k, but taking this to your employer should be a win-win. Certainly it helps you, right? And I'm assuming that you're my client in this example, right? My goal is to safeguard you and get you better options. But if you're working at a larger group, there's likely other physicians there, or you have one other physician that's above you, or there's other staff, right? Everyone really benefits from a 401k plan. And yes, they cost some money to get set up and started. But from the business owner side of it, these are all tax deductions, right? These are all things that can also help the business in terms of taxes. And you want to have good benefits because not only does it bring in good employees, but it keeps good employees. So if you're sitting there and you're thinking, oh my goodness, what the heck do I do? Take that outline, take it to your employer. It's a win-win. But when you don't have a 401k or a 403b, we start to really get limited in our options because it literally comes down to two of those. And if you're a high income professional, even those are now limited. So make sure you do your research here. Take some of these ideas to your employer if you don't have any other options. But I'm still going to cover some other ones here. And then also, if you have 1099 income, even if you're a W-2 employee, we have three other really good ones at the end of this as well. So let's keep rolling through these. Next up, we're going to call this the middle of our road, the HSA health savings account, which coming into this video, you may not have thought that that was an option, but all of a sudden, because of how we have built out really insurance plans these days, you now can look to an HSA. Now, what are the keys here, right? You got to qualify, right? You have to have an actual health insurance plan that is HSA eligible. Again, HSA stands for a health savings account. And if you did not know this, most HSAs today also give you investment options. So if you're sitting there and you don't have a 401k, you already did your backdoor Roth, so that wiped out your IRA and your Roth IRA. Here's an HSA, which is an account that no one ever really built to be an alternative. But as you'll see, as we walk through this list, if you're a W-2 employee, this is like the most bang for your buck you're going to get with this HSA. So your health savings account, uh, I'm going to have to bounce my eyes a little bit here to give you the numbers. 2023 limits. Individual, 3850 That will increase to 4150 in 2024. Family plans, currently 7000 700 and that will increase to 8300 in 2024. So at age 55 you get a $1000 catch-up contribution in there. HSA's pre-tax deduction, I tell all of our clients, I tell all of our viewers, all of our readers on the Wealthkill Weekly, in a perfect world, you fund your HSA every year, you invest those proceeds, and then when medical costs come up in the near term, you pay those out of pocket. And the whole goal is to let your HSA sit on the back burner get funded once per year or however often you're funded it throughout the year to hit those limits, get it invested, 
don't disturb it. And then ideally, as we all get older and our healthcare costs go up, we have this massive bucket just waiting there for us. So inside of that, you're going to be limited to what options you have, but there's plenty of great HSAs out there. You probably can't get too complicated here. You're likely going to get your traditional U.S. equities, your international equities, maybe some unique sectors or again, a real estate ETF or something in there, but you likely won't get too complicated, which I don't think that's a bad thing. But as I noted at the start of the HSA section, based on those numbers, if you're in a family plan, right, let's say 2024, $8,300, that's a lot better than what we just saw on even the IRA or the Roth IRA. And like I said, most of those you're probably going to get knocked out of, right? You're not going to be able to apply for those or take benefit of those based on your income. So curveball for you. I put it right in the middle because I feel like it, it does a good job of separating the true W-2 side compared to the other side of it, which we're going to get into now. It would pertain more to the 1099 side. So HSA, health savings account, if you have not heard of it, check it out. Again, in an ideal world, fund it, invest it, pay other medical costs out of pocket if you can do so. And then the goal is to have a much bigger nest egg later for any healthcare cost. So number three on the list, the HSA, the health savings account. Next up, the simple IRA, which in full disclosure, I had to look up the full name of it. That's how infrequently we use this but I've always labeled it as a simple IRA. But the official name is Savings Incentive Match Plan for Employees. One would argue that's not a simple name. All right, so the simple IRA, again, main proponent for the next three, simple IRA, SEP IRA, solo K, main proponent is you have to have self-employment income. You have to have 1099 income. Now, while we don't see these often, we did just see two of these pop up with new clients and we went back to them with two ideas in mind. Option number one, ask your employer to add a 401k plan. Just like I noted earlier in the video, everyone. Yes, it costs a little bit of money, but those are still tax benefits for the business owner. Business owner is gonna get a much better plan, helps them save on taxes, good benefit for employees, brings in good employees, keeps good employees, a lot of win-wins here. The other unique thing that we will sometimes bring up to our physicians are ask their employer if there's a way to maybe carve out some income. So most of their income is W-2, but they say that some of the work is unique or more project specific or more contract based. Can they pay them 1099 for a portion of it? Can they pay them twenty to $30,000 of 1099 income because of some of these more unique duties that they do that aren't part of like their day to day? And you'd be surprised that that has worked a few times. And then with that, you can then come in and then look to fund either a SEP IRA or a solo K or a simple IRA. Ideally, and we'll get to this at the end, ideally, you're trying to fund your solo K. But here is what the simple IRA, most of the benefits will look very similar to your IRA in terms of looking for pre-tax benefits, your investment options will open up, deductibility is likely going to be there. It's going to be there for everyone. The key is, do you have that 1099 income? That's the key here. Now, here are the current limits, 2023, 15,500. A little bit of a gap here if you're over 50. Over 50, that jumps up to 19,000. This is also one of the unique ones where the age 50 number has been locked in for like decades. So similar to like the $1,000 for the IRA, this one's 3,500. So next year in 2024, the base amount under the age of 50 will go up to 16,000. And then above 50 will go up to 19,500. Here is why I don't love the simple IRA. If you had to compare the simple IRA to the solo K or the SEP IRA, it's your lowest deductibility amount. It's your lowest number on there. The hard part with simple IRAs are you can get an employer match on that. So for example, when we're working with our clients, we have to talk through the pros and cons of maybe giving up that match to then look to utilize another plan like a SEP IRA or a solo K. Sometimes we'll have the clients go back and bring that up to their employer. Hey, I'm going to miss out on $6,000 of a match. I'd also like that included in my W-2 or you know, ideally your 1099 pay so we can get more money into that. So keep an eye on all those moving parts. Simple IRA is not all that common. May they be your only alternative in the 401k? It might be. So you may have to use this plan and that's okay. You could still do some good damage here, but that is one of the other plans there. That is your simple IRA. Next up, the SEP IRA. And as we've done with everyone, the long form simplified employee pension. Funny thing, it's not a pension, but that's the name they gave it. So SEP, again, stands for your simplified employee pension plan. So that's your SEP. Now, I will say that SEP is a pretty common account. This is one of the things that we actually fix a lot with new clients is they opted to open up a SEP IRA because most accountants will default to that as opposed to if they're looking at a SEP versus a solo K, they'll default to the SEP IRA. And there's some reasons based on deadlines and things of that nature, but for the most part, they'll default to the SEP. 
Here's why we don't love the SEP IRA. If it's our only plan, sure, we would love the SEP IRA because as I'm gonna cover soon, the contribution limits are pretty high. But if you have access to a SEP IRA, you certainly have access to a solo 401k then. Again, same 1099 income coming in. So you have that coming in regardless. Same deductibility, all those moving parts. The reason why we don't like the SEP when compared to the solo K is the SEP IRA ruins what we covered in the earlier part of this video in terms of the backdoor Roth IRA because can't have an IRA balance, can't have a simple IRA balance, which is again, going back to the simple IRA, IRA video, another thing we'd lose there is the backdoor Roth. But with your SEP IRA, that also throws off our backdoor Roths going forward. So that's why we don't love the SEP. Now, here is where the SEP really shines. The SEP gives you really good deductibility. So it's up to 25% of your net profit, all the way up to the contribution limit in 2023 is $66,000. So it's a big number, it's great tax deduction. That number actually goes up to $69,000 in 2024, whichever the lesser of those is. So it's either 25% or 66,000 or 69,000. So you get a big deductibility amount. And we do love the SEP for that. And you get a nice investment. It's very similar to the IRA again, right? It opens up your investment universe. It's not a menu of options. You're going to get some good investment options in here. And you can really customize it for whatever you're looking for. Again, whether that's mutual funds, ETFs, different fund families, different expense ratios, you're going to customize that with your SEP IRA. But the reason why we usually steer away from the SEP is simply because it throws off the backdoor Roth IRA. And the solo K, for the most part, is going to give us all the same benefit and maybe even a little bit better on that solo 401k plan. So SEP IRA, great alternative, especially if you have 1099 income. And remember, if you have W-2 income and 1099 income, you could be utilizing both of these, whether that's in terms of a 401k, 403b for W-2 income, but then also that 1099 income, you can also take advantage of these accounts. Keep in mind, you gotta pay attention to contribution numbers and what numbers blend together. So again, working with a good financial advisor, a good accountant, a good CPA, they should keep you in line there. But SEP IRA is an alternative, but I would argue that if you have access to that SEP, you should also look at the next one that's coming up, which we will get into now. Last but not least, probably my second favorite account. Maybe my first, if you talk about total numbers and you get into it, but the solo 401k plan. Again, main requirement here is you have to have 1099 income. You have to have self-employment income for this plan to work. But the beauty of this account is how much can you get into it? And this is where those numbers also get very high. 2023, 66,000. What does that sound like? It sounds like the SEP IRA and you're right. All the way up to 69,000 in 2024. Now this plan's a little bit different than the SEP, which is why I say sometimes it's easier to get more money into the solo 401k plan because the solo K is broken into two parts. Your employee E contribution, which if we use today's numbers, that's that traditional 22,500 that will increase to 23,000 next year. But then you have the employer portion for the additional to get you up to that 66,000 or soon to be 69,000. You have two different numbers in there and that's where this one may allow you to get more in there because it's not all based off of the net profit number. Only the employer side of this contribution is based on the net profit. So solo Ks give you a lot of flexibility in there. Same things here. You're trying to build this in terms of pre-tax dollars because we're trying to make an alternative to a 401k plan or to a 403b plan, but you have to have 1099 income. But like I said last time in the last section, they can also work with a 401k. So if you have W-2 income and 1099 income, you can technically have two 401k plans going. You just got to pay attention to your numbers on what balances can go where, but you can easily have two plans going here. Keep an eye on something called control groups, but you know, for a lot, like if you're an academic physician, but you have a side gig, you're not gonna have control group issues there. So just again, pay attention, work with a good advisor, work with a good accountant. But the solo K, the beauty of the solo K is, yes, we get those larger contributions, but it doesn't throw off the backdoor Roth IRA. And that's really why we always vote solo K over your SEP IRA. Solo K, you can really customize it. You can sometimes use like the blueprint through like a Fidelity or a Vanguard to open up a Solo K, but even there, they'll give you a pretty good investment platform. You can customize these and work with, you know, very specific 401k providers where they're really customizing these. Maybe you're adding in like a mega backdoor function. So you can really customize a Solo K. So walking through all the alternatives, while we call it six alternatives, you know, in a weird way, three of those are leaning more towards W-2 where the other three only apply to 1099 income. But if you have both, you can kind of take advantage of all six of these. The title of the video probably doesn't give it the best direction, but if you're sitting there and you don't have a 401k plan, 
it at least walks you through some new ideas. If you're sitting there and you have W-2 income and 1099 income, hopefully it opens up a whole new world for you. But last one on our list was the solo 401k plan. And that gives you all six other options, maybe complements to what you're currently doing. So understand all your options, take advantage of all your options, and that should give you a good list to work with. And there you have it, six alternatives to think through if you don't have a 401k plan. And to really just hit home on the main topic of this video, if you're sitting there and you don't have a 401k plan, you don't have a 403b plan, and you only have W-2 income, two things come to mind. And I know I've noted these throughout this video, but one, approach your employer and see if you can get this plan added. Like I said, it's not selfish of you. This is something that benefits likely anyone that's earning high income. So whether that's other physicians, whether that's the boss, whoever, it's a benefit there. There's also a lot of good tax benefits in there to get a 401k plan set up for a 3b plan set up. If you don't have that option, whether you're terrified to do it or they say no, or it's going to take a long time to do that, it doesn't. 401k plans are pretty easy to get set up. Then also come back and say, hey, is there any way then that we can carve out some of my income following all the IRS guidelines to maybe get some of my pay as 1099 income so then I can look to open up my own solo K or maybe it's a simple IRA, maybe it's a SEP IRA, but again, lean towards that solo K if you can. So that is the two main takeaways there. And if all else fails, for most physicians, most high income professionals, at least do the backdoor Roth IRA every year. And then if a high deductible health plan makes sense for you and your family, that HSA is probably your next best option in terms of where can we get some good tax benefits because high income, high tax brackets, high income years, accumulation years, we're trying to defer as much as we can because we're likely at the highest bracket we're going to be at considering high income years versus retirement years. So as always, thanks for hanging out with me for the last 15 minutes or so. If you have not subscribed, please subscribe to the channel. You can do that here. If you click on a little bell icon, you also get a notification every time we release a new video. This was a fun one. This is one that we built off again from another comment we got through the Wealth Kill Weekly. So please drop questions, comments, ideas, thoughts in the sections below here on this YouTube video. If you're on the Wealth Kill Weekly, you can also drop those notes into our Google form. Again, thanks for hanging out. And as always, I will catch you on the next video.